Hello everyone, Crydex here. Welcome back to our space exploration playthrough. In our last episode, we worked towards beginning this astronomic science, which is astronomically expensive. And um, in between episodes, I did a few things. Uh, one thing I did is I put all of the vulcanite we had brought over in a chest. And I looked at the ratios for vulcanite, and it does actually seem that it's worth it to smelt iron and copper with vulcanite. So I switched all of my copper smelting lines and iron smelting lines to use vulcanite. And it turns out that you can get, let me find where I plug these in, uh, this one. So it turns out you can get a full belt, a full blue belt of iron plates with less than half a belt of ore when you're combining it with vulcanite. The main reason I switched, if you look here, I can change out by pressing up, I can change which one it's using. You can see that this takes 84 megawatts, whereas the other version only takes 43. So using Vulcanite cuts the power requirement in half, as well as the ore being significantly less to make the same amount of plates. Um, you know, it's about 50% more plates per ore, which means it's using, I guess, 33% less ore. Um, you know, in the ratio of like one Vulcanite block ends up making 20-ish plates. So I figure 40,000 Vulcanite should last me a while. Um, and I can always get more from the planet. And then I also made another production line just to kind of see what's the difference in cost between a bunch of delivery cannon capsules and the cargo rocket sections plus the fuel that I would need to transport things. Um, because, you know, you can think about, okay, how much would it cost me to send 500 stacks of things in delivery cannons, or how much would it cost me to send 500 stacks of things in a cargo rocket? And turns out, uh, and I think right now I'm at 72, that, that was assuming the next level, um, turns out that the delivery cannon capsules are actually a little bit cheaper. They're very comparable in terms of stone and coal and oil, but then they cost less in terms of iron and copper. And the vulcanite is a huge difference because in this example, I'm making the liquid rocket fuel from vulcanite itself. We could make it from oil, in which case the oil cost would be a lot higher. But either way, the delivery cannon capsules are cheaper. And especially considering you don't generally have all 500 slots of a cargo rocket full, for now, delivery cannons, if I have the energy, are the way to go. So if I need to deliver some things um, to my, you know, to the planet, what's it called? My Vulcanite planet, Ogun, which I will need to go back here at some point because a meteor uh, struck and destroyed some of my accumulators and I don't have any repair packs. And I also realized I don't have any, um, I don't have any way of making repair packs I did make a little tiny iron smelting and copper smelting so I could make more nanobots when I was placing down all the solar, but these are not within the logistics network. So I actually can't even have the bots go and repair things. So that's a little bit unfortunate. Um, I also would need to put, put in the cargo rocket sections, but I could have this launch, you know, the Vulcanite and steel back home at any time, which would be handy. But we will need to think about protecting this base from asteroids, or I guess meteors, at some point. Um, and this blinking thing is going to bother me for a while. But for now, uh, we are going to work on the astronomic science. And I don't think I did anything else significant in the episodes. I did get more oil, just as kind of a checklist item. I hooked up all these with some pumps to go around and join up with this line. So hopefully my main base won't run out of oil for a long time now. And other than that, I've just collected a lot more resources to put into our cargo rocket, ready to um, do our astronomic science. So because of the number of buildings we'll need, I will grab some more of the scaffolding, because I think we'll probably still need more of that. But I think I have all the resources I need for my astronomic science list. So let's go ahead and double check this. 
So I'm going to need three manufacturers, which I already have, seven supercomputers, which will take a bunch of processing units, which I already have loaded up here. I've got one and a half thousand. Seven astrometrics facilities, which require a decent amount of low density structures and red chips, which I have plenty of. I have 800. And we're only going to need 300. And then 20 telescopes, which is going to be 800 low density structure, 800 glass, and some multispectral mirrors, which we have plenty of glass, plenty of low density structures. So we should be able to build everything. And then let me go make sure I have all the modules I need. I actually didn't didn't do that already. Um, got a few extra things I can get rid of here. So let me grab some speed modules and then we'll be off. So it looks like I needed about 125 and only 20 of the speed threes or efficiency threes. So that should do it. And we will launch ourselves up to space. Novice orbit, landing pad, launch. Alright, looks like we had a safe landing this time. And now we can take the capsule, put it here. Interesting. I guess if you put it directly on top, it doesn't... Oh, there we go. Okay. I just hadn't put it close enough. Okay, we've got that. And now we need to... This is still unloading, but we need to focus on crafting the rest of the buildings we need. So let's first finish off the supercomputers. I'm just going to take a few stacks of these. I think we need exactly seven, right? Let's check. Yes. Seven, seven, and twenty. So, I can take these out, and then we need to switch over to our astrometrics. We need seven of these. So I need some more low-density structure. Okay, that's five, six, seven. And then we need I think it was 20 telescopes. So I will need to grab some of the mirrors down here. Which means I actually want to stop using them for a split second so I can collect some to use in the telescopes. We should have plenty of power now with all of our flat solar panels, which is good. I'm excited to use these on other planets. It's going to make solar power a lot easier, especially once we get the better accumulators as well, because those are ten times as dense. Okay, so that should be all the mirrors we need. And then we can load those in. Again, we need lots of high-density structure, or low-density structure. Did I run out of low density structure? No, okay, good. I was like, there's no way. I brought tons. Okay. All right, we're getting close. Though I don't know why the bots aren't delivering it to me. 
Oh, they did. I just couldn't see it in my inventory. Okay. We need more glass for this one. And then a little bit more low density structure. And there we go. 20 telescopes. Oh, I made 23 somehow. I was not paying attention. A few too many can't hurt, I'm sure. Okay, and we're ready to start our build. Now, I also am going to need to supply 147 of the cold thermofluid, which I guess is going to require some hypercoolers. Looks like I need six hypercoolers to handle that level. And then, to handle that amount of cool thermofluid, oh dear, I thought it might be a lot. I'm going to need about 30 radiators. So, we'll deal with that later. First, I just want to get things running. So, we'll put the radiators and supercooler stuff, hypercooler stuff in this area. So, I'll start the build in this area. I feel like I'm going to run out of space pretty quick. Okay, at least these are small. That's good. So, what I want to do is put all the telescopes in the same area, because they all use the same things. I'll even use space belts for these observation frames. So I'll need this one crafting the observation frames. And then I'll need all the telescopes. So they'll have a line of, oh, we need our space pipes. So they'll have a line of pipes on both sides, like that. I'll place them in a line. I'll have the belt running like this. Because then I can copy it. And I think we can have... Something like this to insert. And then we need to collect the results, which are three different types. I guess we can put those on belts coming out. And I'll just use different sides, different lanes for the different types. Yeah, that'll be fine. Okay, so then we need... That's four, and I believe we needed 20. So I'll have to copy this one, two, three, four times. So that should be all the telescopes we need. We'll get ourselves another robo-port over here. Okay, so we need more belts going up. And then we need to figure out the numbers. We have seven doing visible observation frames, which is this one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we have six doing UV there's six and then we have seven doing infrared so those are all infrared so then these will all place on the close side of the belt wait I have yeah seven and then these will place on the close side of the belt. And then the infrared will be on the outside of the belt. And then those all need to go visible, infrared, UV. Okay, so those need to go into separate astrometrics facilities. I'm going to grab some more scaffolding. Uh, what happened here?
Oh, we need storage. Well, we can fix that pretty quickly. There we go. Okay, so we need some of the space platform scaffolds. I'm just going to turn on the jetpack. It's a lot faster than walking. Okay, I want to leave this area for more science. We lost a couple science labs in the meteor strike. I also discovered that the meteor defense installations definitely do not protect uh, the whole planet, even if they're on the orbital station, which is kind of sad. So I, I made sure to put some on the regular planet as well. However, we don't have any on our Vulcanite planet, so that planet is very vulnerable. Okay, so we need two taking in... You know, these only have one output, so I might as well just put the two astrometrics, like, right here. Eh, no, we'll, we'll, we'll make it a little more official just so that we can expand it later, if needed. So, we'll have these two. I guess I can just do something like this. So the one that's on both sides is the infrared. So that's the one that I will have up here. And so we will split. And we want visible. All right, is this the visible? Yeah. So visible will go left. The other ones will go right. Put those in, put those in. And then we produce mostly good stuff, a tiny bit of junk data cards and scrap. So I think what I'll do is a active and passive provider for each of these. These stack to 50, which they'll be making about half of one of each per second. So I think I'm okay with just having one stack. And we'll do that. And this will be visible observation data. Nope, data, not frame. Just here. And then for this one, unfortunately, I need some good old fashioned filter inserters because stack filter inserters can only have one filter, which is a little bit, I don't know. I don't fully understand why that is, but you know, it's how games are sometimes. So we need junk data cards and scrap. So those will be pushed into the storage network. And then the junk data cards and storage will get used first. So that should work fine. I think that's all good to go. And I will copy that and paste it here. I'll flip it and paste it here and here. And we'll just have to change the filters on what they want. This one is for the infrared observation data, copy that, and then this one is for the, whatever the last one is, UV. Got all the different spectrums of light, which is pretty cool, for sure. Okay. We'll put that there. So then we need inserters going in. Yeah, that's kind of in the way. We'll do something like this. The output priority to the right is going to be, uh, is it UV is right here, I think. Yeah, I definitely didn't match this up right. Yeah, these are supposed to be UV right here. That's visible and that's infrared. Yeah, I think that's, that's right now. Okay, so then these come around 
Can I go underneath? Uh, I can if that's not in the way. Hmm. I think I'll just do the easy route here and place them in from the other side. Like that. Okay, so then that will produce all of the observational data. This one is making the frames, which I need to supply. And I'll put one more. I just realized I can drop this down to one manufacturer with just one more speed module. So there's no reason I shouldn't do that. And then we will need a light oil unloader, unbarreler. We have blueprint for somewhere. Light oil barrel. Need more requester chests. That should do it. And then we need everything else in a requester chest. We'll request a hundred. And that's what gets supplied to this belt here. Which is going the wrong direction currently, so I need to switch these around. Okay. So that should do it, and then we just need our thermo fluid, and those will be good. Back to our hell mod. So we've got that taken care of. I will need to be producing some blank data cards out of junk data cards. We already have one of those though. So I think I forgot to, yeah. We have an input of blank data cards. How much? I need a third of a manufactory. So I think we can just request those in because I already have this guy running blank data cards. And we will prioritize to the right and we will passively provide a couple stacks. Unfortunately, we're going to have this issue. Huh. Can I... I don't know how to make it only request from storage. Because really, I want this to only use ones from the storage network rather than the new ones we're creating. I guess we can do something where okay, we'll do this. We'll have input priority right. Place this here. And I will only we need some circuits. I will only input if we have blank data card is greater than 200. Because that's how many, or no, that's only 100. That's how many we'll store up in here. So if we have more than 200 in the circuit network, then that means we must have some stored somewhere. We'll make sure it goes on the same side of the belt, and then this will be what supplies our supercomputer with blank data cards. Yeah, and we need blank data cards, not the machine learning data, so we should be, yeah, we'll be okay with this. Now the polished data storage only makes 0.8 per second, and this uses, looks like more than that. So I may need to put some speed in these guys. We've got plenty of power anyway, so but I may need more of these at some point, because we use, I think we use blank data cards for pretty much everything. So. We may need more of that going on at some point. But for now, it's okay. 
All right, so I need to take care of the recycling of junk data cards, which is happening here already. We can just put a speed module in there to make sure it's fast enough. So as long as I provide the junk data cards to storage, this will figure that all out. I don't need to worry about that. And I don't think I need to worry about these because we just figured out we have enough. So now we need to Got all that done. We need to make astrometric data all together, which we can do right next to these. That also uses thermofluid, unfortunately. So I should have left space right here for this. That's really unfortunate. It would fit perfectly right here. I think I'll put it right next to them. Because we need same temperature thermofluid in so we'll just put it here and connect these up so that should work and then we'll do a requester chest just 15 of each and store one stack well i guess let's see we're storing two stacks of the rest of them. Those still stack to 50. So we want two stacks of these so that we have two stacks of all four types of data. And then we need three supercomputers making the catalogs two supercomputers using the catalogs to make insight and then one supercomputer using the insight to make significant data. So we need our supercomputers now, which we'll put over here. I'll just leave some space in between all these columns for who knows what. So we said we needed three of these. And I'll use undergrounds where I can so that Overall, we'll need less fluid to saturate all this. Uh, let's see. Okay, we've got this. I'll figure it out. At some point, we'll need to use tanks and circuits to really get our thermofluid working correctly, or we'll just have to let them saturate entirely, which could end up using a lot of resources. I'm trying to decide if I want to do a belt or just requester chests. I think the throughput is so low, I'm just going to do requester chests. And we can even share this requester chest. We'll do two there. And then we'll do five there, so they'll each have enough for five crafts. I will use a belt to make sure they're only in one storage spot. Astronomic catalog stacks, item stack size is 50. So, I think two stacks is plenty for now. And then we'll need two supercomputers making insight. We will leave a space there. And then these have a requester chest that they can share. And they'll output into the same chest here. And then we can always just do this method where we take a filter inserter and actively provide the data cards. Because we're gonna get some blank data cards out. So that's nice. So for every astronomic catalog, so I'm kind of trying to figure out this loop here. So every astronomic catalog uses four data cards, 
which those data cards are used to make our observational data. Now technically we need a little more than one because we only get a 90% chance that we end up. So visible we have a 98% chance, UV we only have a 90% chance, and infrared we only have an 85% chance. So these each cost a little bit more than one blank data card, but around one data card each. So then we've used four to make our catalog, and then when we use the catalog to make insight, we get two insight and two data cards back. So we get about half of the data cards back. And then we need to use the insight itself to make significant data in the astronomic simulation which again needs cold thermofluid so it's nice these all need the same temperature of different fluids or same fluid and then when we use 36 insight which costs about one data card each right because we get two insight and two data cards back so that's about an output of four data cards, then we, we get four significant data and 32 blank cards back. So it is a fairly closed loop. The only place we lose data cards is in these not being a 100% chance to turn a blank data card into the data. Otherwise, it's a perfectly self-sustaining loop. So that's why the total input of blank data cards is fairly small. For this whole process is because we get most of them back. Uh, okay, so we need a requester chest and a provider. And we'll just do that and then we'll do the same thing with a filter inserter because we need to get rid of the extra blank data cards. Which goes here, blank data card. We need another robo port somewhere up here. another substation make sure everything has power wow 180 i don't know if i want five crafts worth because this is going to be so slow so i think just requesting 36 actually is plenty and we need another substation here so I think everything's ready to go. And we will hook up our fluids here. We need a little bit more scaffolding. Have some space. Hmm. I guess this could maybe be here. Then we have space for an underground. Oh, right. I keep forgetting I have these long straight pipes. I should use these more often. Because that will really help with both the price, because, I mean, we get nine spaces for only five space pipes. And then it also helps with not requiring as much fluid to saturate the whole network. And that actually worked out to be exactly the right length, so that was convenient. And then this one we'll place on the close side, like that. And then we'll make another, let's see, this is the hot thermofluid, so we could use probably the 15 length. Maybe that's a little too long, but we'll be okay. I could just do this. Oh, but that doesn't connect up right there. That's right. So, I guess we'll use one of the nines. Like that. And then the cold thermofluid can attach right here. Like that. Use undergrounds to connect up all these. 
So that should do it. And now we just need to connect them to these loops. And I need more scaffolding. And then we're going to need a lot more hypercoolers to be able to cool enough fluid for all of that. But we'll get it running first and then we'll deal with the hypercooler issue. Okay, get some more scaffolding. And I should put space pipes. Oh, I do have space pipes. Okay. We're just going to request more of the pipe to grounds. And I don't think I have space belts requested. So we need that on the list. Undergrounds will have 20 at a time. Splitters will have 20 at a time. Okay, so we'll extend our scaffolding here. And then we'll make another... I actually think I want the 15s for this. So then the hot fluid is attached to this bottom one. So that works perfectly. And then the cold fluid is here, which will attach like this. Okay. And then finally, we need a single manufactory making our science, which I'll just put right here. And I can paste over it like that, although it doesn't put the modules in. We have two and six. No, two and two. And then we can request, and we'll have to provide the junk data. And with six junk data cards, you know, there's a 70% chance we recycle all of those. So we even get to recycle quite a few of the data cards used in the significant data because the insight and the significant data are each worth about one data card. The catalogs are worth four though. So we're not, we're not getting a full amount back, but that's fine. We're using some to make the science pack. So we will provide and request. Of course I'm out of all of these. I should maybe just have them automated. It's one of those things where for some reason I just keep handcrafting it and I never really figure out how to not that I can't figure out how to automate it I just don't get that motivation to okay so we have crafted frames looks like these are running and I did a thing that is silly I haven't connected up the liquids for these thankfully it's easy but for the outputs this is going to be a bit more of a challenge because I didn't do this well um, because these are in the way. I guess we could do something like this. Just wasting so many resources. But this will work. And then we can connect them up with undergrounds. Like this. Not a great solution, but it does work. Okay. So I think we've got the fluid flowing correctly. And this poor hypercooler, we're going to fill him up with as much speed as he can get. It doesn't take that much power. So he's going to need it work over time. We'll have to add a few more here in a second. Which I'll expand this area. This will be my fluid cooling areas. But I think we've automated everything we have to. Yeah, I just, I don't have enough cold thermal fluid for everything. Aha. These don't have any blank data cards. So 
So here's what we'll do. I have a chest here. That will quest. I guess I should just find it. Blank data cards. I think 30 is plenty. And then we'll have one here and here that place them on the belt. But we probably only need 10 requested because some is going to stack up on the belts. Oh shoot, we really need this to go left is the infrared. Because then it does this. Which actually would also work nicely, but we've already got the other requester chest, so we'll pick all those up. And then get rid of our UV observation data. And then these blank data cards, I'm just going to put them back in the network. I'll let the bots figure out where they should go. And I have visible frames, which I need to put in these two. Now, why is this scrap not getting removed? Oh, I didn't actually craft the filter inserters to place. There we go. Okay, so those are running. Have I made any of this yet? Looks like we're not getting enough cold thermo fluid past all this. But this is all very exciting. Okay, so let's work on our cold thermo fluid production. It looks like we need how much per second? 147. That's intense. So we need six hypercoolers with full speed modules in them to handle that. And then we're going to need a ridiculous amount of thermal radiators. So that's fine. Of course, we can't craft anything by hand in space. So we got to go over here, find hypercoolers. And we need a lot of pumps. I'm just going to use this to request what we need for five. And I will craft some tanks. Because we need one storage tank each. There's four. Okay, six should be enough for our current purposes. And I don't know if we have the materials for the million, the million radiators that we need. I'm gonna extend this down a little bit. So we're just gonna have a line of hypercoolers. We'll do three, and then we'll do a space, and then we'll do three. That way we can fit something in between if we have to. Or that's four. Okay. Okay, so I can also super cool thermal fluid, but I don't, I don't think I have any recipes that use super cooled yet. Let me double check that I didn't miss that, and these are all... Yeah, you can see because there's the little like temperature bars, and these all have two. And these have two, that has two, and... Oh, right, this building needs thermofluid as well. Just what doesn't need thermofluid is a better question. And we need this one to connect up to the cold, which I have no idea how I'm going to do. Huh. I guess I could do an underground like 
this. But that doesn't connect up nicely. Unless I do that. Okay. So then we need lots of thermofluid going in. Oh, right. I can't set them up this way. Because there's two outputs. So we need to leave a space between all of them. So instead, we're going to make a little grid here. So I think, I think I can put those on the same output and it just won't input. I think, we'll, we'll see if that works. Cause I'd, I'd rather not space them out by two if possible. So then we'll just hook up all the inputs from this side and we'll do the same thing and flip it to the other side. And then the outputs, let's see, can we make this work? Yeah. Okay. So the outputs will be hooked up on this side for the hot fluid and this side and then the inputs or I mean the cold output will go two out I think this should work and then we'll just have to go around for the warm thermofluid and around for the cold. We could probably use one of the long pipes. Okay. I think that should do it. And we need speed modules in all these. Though I must have not placed enough speed modules. Yeah, these are all missing their speed modules. Because I was going to say, I brought just barely more than enough. And were we supposed to have speed modules on the significant data? Uh, two, but I don't think I actually need them because that's 0.28, so... And I don't think I need them on this guy either. So we'll just leave it like that. Okay, so let's see. We need to connect the regular thermofluid, which is here. And then the cold thermofluid will connect up on this line, which is currently... I'm going to remove this one. Cold thermofluid. We'll just put it there. Wait, different fluids? How is that different fluids? This is cold thermofluid. This is cool. Yeah, cool thermofluid. How are those different systems? Ugh, this is frustrating. I have no idea. Let me try deleting all the pipes and we'll. We'll go again. Okay. Someone needs to explain to me in the comments how this is different fluids. It Cool thermofluid, cool thermofluid. Space coolant warm is the special fluid name. Space coolant warm. So, there, some sort of bug, I feel like. I had... When I was trying to connect the water outputs of the um, the core fragment processors, I had a weird issue there as well where I couldn't connect water inputs. So I'm not sure. I'm honestly not like, will it work if I do that? 
That doesn't make any sense to me. And how can't I, why can't I connect this one? Is it because of that? I guess so. Okay, so it didn't like that, so I do need a fix. Ah, that's so frustrating. Okay, try again. So I do need to fix that. I was hoping that would work, but it doesn't. So, we will get this figured out. I think I can still do this, though. I hope. Or I at least use the same input. And then we'll just have to space it out by two. Yeah, because we're not using the other input, so I don't have to worry about the spacing here. So that should work. And then we need the regular thermal fluid to be output. I'll do something like this. Let's see. We can even connect it up kind of fancy like that. So one can do the same. like this. Could I have just done it that way with this one? Yeah, we'll do it that. That's a lot better. Okay, so all the warm thermal fluid is connected up. We'll go out the front. Okay, so then we'll have to have a lot more thermal radiators, but they're at least all doing their job now. And then we need to connect the cold thermal fluid. I only have three left. up. So I think that's done. So now everything's connected and these are the the slowdowns is thermal radiators, but I think everything else is connected properly. Oh, we need to reconnect these though. Okay, so the warm fluid is connected here, but I'm not attaching that back to this loop anywhere. So I need to have this maybe connect. Maybe I should go sideways. I don't know. And then this cold thermal fluid needs to connect here. So this is all connected. Okay, so I think everything's connected. The issue is that we don't have enough thermal radiators. So I'm going to need to craft about 30 more of those, and they require a lot of copper cables. How many, how much copper do I have up here? I do have 1.3k copper cable. I have no copper. Am I requesting copper plates? I oh, am, yeah, I just don't don't have any left. We'll request a little bit more for the next time. And then we'll request a few more stacks of cables. But then we're gonna have to just craft a bunch more back on the home planet to get those going. However, we do have enough for a few more, so I'll get those going.
actually need to find where the cable is and take it all myself. Okay. That's enough for seven. Seven more should be helpful. And I think we're going to put these in a line. Something like this and this. So we can just get as many as possible. Once we get space beacons, these builds will be a lot faster. But for now, we have to do it the painful way. And then we'll go up, and these will go across. So then the warm thermofluid needs to hook up to here. And then this is the cool thermofluid which hooks up to the input here. So we can do this. Okay, so that will help to have seven more of these running. And I will put regular speed twos in all of them. That'll get me 54 full thermal fluid per second. But we need about four times that amount, I think. But for now, we should at least see space science slowly becoming a reality. And then, let's see, we are out of more thermofluid because we're out of copper plates. So let's give this a little bit more. Because a full stack of copper plates is like 500 thermofluid. So we'll give this guy a little bit more from my personal stash. Just to make sure we have enough thermal fluid. Because we lose we lose one every time we craft 50, so. There's a small amount of loss. Looks like we're still processing our junk data cards correctly. I mean, everything's working. We've got our blank observation frames saturated. These are all running. They just are short on thermal fluid. These guys are all running properly. Outputs are getting taken care of. We have way too many blank data cards there. Put those back in the network. And then... This guy needs infrared observation data, which I think we're getting last because these get the thermal fluid last, so that makes sense. So I maybe should have balanced things out better because this way we're going to have some issues. We're going to get a full amount of these datas before we even start getting very much infrared, but it's at least working. And then our catalogs. Yeah, because we need astrometric data first, which needs the infrared data, which we're not getting. We're getting a very small amount of, anyway. And I wish I could put priorities, you know, because I want the infrared data to go to this one in terms of requesting before it goes to these. So... I'm trying to think of a good way I could manage this. I guess I could have these only insert if the data types... No, I don't think it's worth it. Because I was thinking I could maybe make them insert only if the infrared data was greater than 5, meaning it's stored up a little bit, which means the other requester chests are filled up. But then the problem is it's only caring about one of these inputs, so if one of them is, you know, coming here for it, it's just not necessarily even going to fix the issue. Okay, well, it's at least all set up correctly, I think. We'll have to find out once these start running, but... But we have gotten six astronomic insight so far, and we need 36 to have four data, and then we need 
two data per astronomic science. Wow. This is intense. So if we look at our production, apparently when you're in orbit, it's still looking at the production of the whole planet. But astronomic. Okay, so we've made 10 insights so far. So we're still a ways from our first astronomic science pack, but I will check that off the list because we've done it. Um, we do need a lot more thermal radiators, so the next cargo rocket is going to be carrying all the resources I need for thermal radiators. Probably we will do the amount it says we need here. So we're going to need 30, I'm just going to do 36. Should be enough for everything I've got set up, which means 18, I might do a block of nine on each side and then do another block of nine on each side in this area. All with the speed modules. This is measuring with speed module three. What if I do speed module twos? Yeah, I might just do speed module twos. There's just a lot cheaper in terms of total resources. Um, and that will all run properly. But for now, we're just kind of playing the waiting game because that's about a fourth as slow as I programmed it to be. So, and lots of things are going to want to saturate first. So we are out of blank data cards as well. Where's the, oh, it's going into this chest. Yeah, we have maybe too many stacks of machine learning data here. We'll limit that to four. Okay, well, we'll need a lot more resources for these things. Blank data cards I'm out of because I'm out of copper plates. So copper plates are in higher demand. I'm going to... I know I just upped this, but I'm going to up it a little bit more. We're just going to do 3,000, I think. And then I will go ahead and fly home. Our packed cargo sections in there and this is all ready to go again looks like we're already about halfway full and we'll fill the rest with the ingredients I need for lots more of the radiators so really the biggest thing is just the copper cables everything else is fairly small amounts Speaking of copper cables, yeah, I knew I'm storing them somewhere. We'll let that begin to fill up a bit more. With a faster inserter. I mean, at this point, I should use a mini loader. Uh, one. There we go. This should be output priority right. Okay, so another thing I will want to do sooner or later is automate production module fours, because we already have, <clears throat> excuse me, we already have everything we need. It's just machine learning data, which we'll need to ship back from space. Um, well, I'm trying to think, do I need to ship it back from space? Just depends on what I want to do, but I might ship this back from space so I can make the module fours on the planet, but I guess it doesn't really matter where I make them because you can't put productivity modules in them in the first place. But with productivity module fours, we'll really be able to increase some of the more expensive things. Specifically, one of the first places I'll want to put them is in orbit here. I want to put them in the space science labs and I'll probably take out the speed modules since we're about to start using the space science which I looks like we're getting close to being able to make some um, with space science we'll want to have as much productivity as we can because as you can see you know the space science is very expensive which we have already discovered 
So productivity module fours will help with that. I need cryonite for all sorts of things, which is some sort of cold ore that only grows or happens in frozen planets. But we need this to make beryllium. We need it to make, looks like we can make more thermofluid more cheaply if we have that. We can make, well, science types. Once we can super cool, that will help. This looks like really high tech stuff. Um, but really, we mainly need it for beryllium and cryonite slush, which goes and makes lubricant more cheaply. We can make water ice, which will allow us to transport water easily with delivery cannons. And we can also cool thermofluid more effectively with cryonite slush. But that's going to require more advanced science. So I kind of feel like we're just bouncing back and forth between so many different things we need to do to get space science more efficient. Um, so in between these next two episodes, I think I'm going to travel to the planet that I'm collecting vulcanite from and install a few meteor defense installations, which means I'll need more solar panels because they draw five megawatts. So I may even, gosh, I may create the smaller ones, the meteor defense, what are they called, outposts? Meteor point defense, because those require a lot less power. So I may just make a few of those and put them in the important parts but the range is pretty small and the accuracy is pretty small. So I don't know. Oops. I don't want to craft five of them. Um, so I might do that. I might um, put the thermal radiators all in place because that's not going to be all that interesting. And then we'll get started on actual um, astronomic space science in the next episode. And we'll get to unlock all sorts of fun stuff with that. Let's, let's take a quick gander. So we get to do all of our safety and then we get to do zone discovery so we can search for more stuff there. We get to have thermal radiator two, which is twice as fast, which given how many of them we need will be nice, but we'll need beryllium for that first. So, and crinite. So I won't quite be able to make those. And what else? Looks like that's it for tier one. There's some other things here that require a few other sciences. We'll be able to do X-ray and microwave telescopes, but I think those are mostly, yeah, these things are all to work towards astronomic science pack two, which then can get us other stuff as well. So really we're just doing it for the survivability researches and oh, there's another research here. Oh, interesting. Okay, thermal radiating efficiency. So we can slow down the process to maintain 499 out of 500 of the thermofluid. So we lose a lot less thermofluid, but it takes longer. I probably won't be able to use this recipe until we have beacons. Otherwise, it'll just be insanely slow. But I'm excited about where things are going. Um, and then maybe cryonite will be the next thing we look for. Because I think there are some planets that have cryonite on them. Let's take orbits out. There's a little bit of cryonite on this planet, but I think I looked at this planet and it doesn't have any ice on it. So cryonite can only spawn where there's ice. So we may need to go to this planet here, which has a small amount of biters and get cryonite from there. So that might be on the list for the next episode or somewhere in the next couple episodes. But this episode's gone a little long, so thank you for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments, and I will see you guys next time.